What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Co-op Cast. I'm your host Nima Afrasiabi and today is a very special episode of the Co-op Cast because this is going to be our first in-person live interview. And just as a quick disclaimer, me and my guest Ellis, we are both fully vaccinated and we are respecting CDC guidelines just so everyone is aware. So some of you may know Ellis, some of you may not. Um, he is a physics major, an undergrad at, the, uh, at UC Santa Cruz, um, and he is going to talk with us a little bit more about how he found out about the co-op and just some of the things he's been up to with his research. So I'm just going to go ahead and just get us started here. So Ellis, just tell us a little bit about where you grew up and how you heard about the co-op. Sure. So um, uh, I grew up in a town called um, Pacifica. Uh, it's just out of San Francisco. It's right on the beach. We have a Taco Bell on the beach. Everyone there serves. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I heard about the co-op because um, I actually went to preschool with a man named, well, a young boy named Taylor <laughs> Womack. Um, he's now a man. You may know him as your president. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we, we know each other since we were three. Amazing. Uh, we grew up together. Um, and I was just, I was doing online school from my my house back up in the Bay and just not seeing very many people and going a little stir crazy. <laughs> and I was like, I want to reintegrate into society and meet some new people. Yeah. Um, and Taylor was like, I have just the place for you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how I heard about it. Um, you know, he had told me a lot about it and just told me that it's pretty unique in terms of like, it's, you know, it's owned by a nonprofit that's democratically managed. Um, you know, the people who live here, like, make, you know, have the ultimate say in, like, what goes on here. And it's, like, you know, compared to, like, I've lived in a couple different, like, college towns, you know, it's much better than uh, having, a, having privately owned because it's, well, it's a lot cheaper, um, a lot more affordable, and... Um, I actually have input yeah. as opposed to like a private department. So I, I, I thought that that was like my like kind of ideological like, oh, this will be really cool to see how this works. But I mean, like, it's just like I wanted to really just meet some new people. Definitely. So that's definitely. why I came down. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, we're, we're really active here at the co-op. And tell us actually what uh, crew are you part of here? Uh, I'm in kitchen crew. I just got my KC training last week. Oh, nice, that's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you, Dante. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah, I, uh, I, but I'm trying, my goal is, well, I'm applying for MemCom. That's awesome. I like, wow. yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, good I, luck. I hope I get it. I hope you do too. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I'm probably gonna end up joining that if, I, if, uh, if they you know, extend me the offer, but uh, I would like to be able to get trained in every single crew. To just to be really? credit, should, yeah, facilities, dessert, Amazing. bathroom, whatever. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome that you want to get involved. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and so again, as I mentioned, um, so you are a physics major, and what so, exactly attracted you to that major? What is it about physics that you really liked? Well, before I went to community college um, in uh, near my home back in the Bay, um, and I switched around a bunch. I started as biology because my dad is in biotech. Um, and then I was like, ah, I kind of want to get into like chemistry and I was like, I, but none of it had enough like math for me, I guess. I really like math. Oh, I, see. I really like right. logical systems and puzzles and uh, that kind of led me to naturally to physics because it's the application of math into understanding like um, the physical world, yeah. of course. Definitely. So, um yeah, that's what attracted me to it. I just, I love math and I love understanding existence. That's awesome, that's awesome. Now, uh, we spoke a little bit uh, earlier actually uh, about some of the research that you were doing. And uh, for people who don't know you, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us just a little bit about uh, what you've been working on, what you're doing in your research lab. Sure, yeah. so um, it's actually not research I'm doing currently because right now um, at Santa Cruz I'm doing uh well as of when i go back i'm going to be doing some research in one of the labs there yeah. um but my goal after I graduate is actually to kind of pivot away from physics and go more towards uh 
uh, like computational mathematics. Um, yeah. And the goal there is like, I want to help. Um, is it okay if I go on a slight tangent for a sec? Uh, go for it. Um, go for it. Back in the seventies, there was a government in South America that was like trying to figure out how to like more efficiently allocate resources in society and they um with the help of this computer scientist named roger uh de beer i believe um designed this thing called cybersyn and oh. the goal was to um be able to take stock of like what resources they had at their disposal and like get it to the people who needed them I see. um I see. so you know you know uh also to organize work and resources to actually make sure that everyone's needs are met um, I see. Yeah, to each according to his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, but the project ended very abruptly um, in 1973. They had, like, a, um, there was a, a coup against the government, unfortunately. Oh. And uh, so then the project disappeared. But I oh, think I the principles of it are really intriguing because it yeah. says, like, oh, wait, maybe we can direct society to be more efficient and more intentional with how it spends its like resources and its natural resources and its labor power um, into making sure that everyone's taken care of and has it's amazing yeah just like um, figuring out how can we make uh, how can we make society more efficient yeah. and allocate you know, natural resources and labor power into uplifting everyone's social condition um, and investigating that scientifically. But yeah, so it's like calculate, excuse me, calculating um, how complex a society, yeah. how big of a computer would one need, um, how much co like computational power would one need Absolutely. in order to in order to actually uh, efficiently um, plan an economic an economic system yeah. i see that's that's yeah. awesome it sounds like yeah. really important work and i wish yeah. you the best in that honestly i think that's that's, <laughs> that's amazing that you're you're getting involved in that and, and how exactly did you hear about that i mean how did you well interested in that? um so i've always you know i i grew up um as i grew up uh part of this church like really small church but you know it's in a lot of places called um Unitarian Universalism. I see. And um, uh, we have it's a very, it's like a non-denominational church. Like anyone can attend. You can be Christian, Hindu, Muslim. You can go. Wow. It's very non-religious religion. I guess. I see. Like I see. secular humanist religion. Um, it's very inclusive. It sounds. Yeah, like. my yeah. friends used to make fun of it for me. They're like, "That's not even a religion. It's more of a philosophy." And they're kind of right. Like, it's more about like respecting other people yeah um acknowledging um spirituality but like everyone can do that in their own way absolutely um it's a, it, it, like it's universal it's like a un, you know following universal principles um so like that's Definitely. that really like kind of gave me my principles and like yeah. my outlook on life and so i've always wanted to figure out how can i use my uh, my, sk my, my skill set as someone who's into math and I guess like puzzles and, and logical systems like, yeah. to um, to help uplift other people because I just I, yeah. I va in value the inherent worth and dignity of every human being yes. so that and that's how I was raised and so like I wanted to do something career wise that aims to achieve that and to acknowledge that dignity um, that's awesome. So that is yeah. so that's the motivation. How I heard about Cybersyn and this whole automation business yeah. is uh, just reading. I love history. I love yeah. reading about, um, especially like you know the, the 20th century. The, uh, okay. The history of modernity is like really really fascinating to me, and so just hearing about how different people think about society and um, yeah how they what their approach to like society is that's how i kind of came across roger de beer and allende in chile yeah that's awesome that's awesome and i'm really glad that you you found something that you really really yeah. connect with that's that's so important i think Th thank you yeah i mean it yeah. really is like uh, if i can actually 
make significant progress on this, I will feel like very fulfilled in my yeah. and yeah, I feel like I I'm moving towards what I see my purpose as. That's amazing. And I'm really happy that you're able Thank to you. do that and yeah, I wish you all the best in, in that <laughs> that journey, honestly. Thank so. you. Um and so I guess to kind of talk a little bit more about so like you mentioned, uh Taylor was a big inspiration for you to come to the yes. co op and uh you know he's someone that you're obviously very close with. We um, yes could you tell us just a little bit more about, you know, how how did you even meet Taylor? I mean, where did you guys meet? Like I said, uh, we, we grew up together. Like, we went to... Actually, you know, it's funny. We went to yeah. um, a preschool that was called the Co-op Nursery School. Wow. Yeah, wow. it was wow. run by the parents of the kids. Wow. Um, it was democratically ran. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, we've always had the cooperative spirit, even since we were children, because... Uh, Definitely. Our parents were involved in like making sure we got an education and we had played in a safe environment and that theme has just come back in so many different ways. Like in our high school we were both part of like student government, um, trying to make sure that, you know, students had a say. Um, but yeah, that's how we met. Um, it was like a really amazing experience growing up because the parents really cared, you know, it was their children and of course. Um and I learned a lot about life and um, dinosaurs. I remember <laughs> a lot about dinosaurs and bugs and yeah. Yeah. So that's how we met. We, we both grew up at the co-op and, uh, and now here we are back at the co-op. Um, Full circle. Yeah. We're really, Full circle. really, truly. Yeah, that's amazing. That's awesome. And I'm so glad that you guys are able to keep being friends, you know, especially with the pandemic. And, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so hard. I'm glad to... we're still friends. We've, we've yeah. been through a lot. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, he, um, he, he, sorry, he's just told me so much about the amazing community here and, like, all the wonderful people that are here and how much they care about each other and, like, care to keep this really, really unique um, living mm -hmm. situation alive and I yeah. thought that was really inspiring and you know as someone who's interested in like how do we more efficiently organize society along democratic and scientific principles obviously the co-op is like a little perfect microcosm of society and it I, I, I think it's really fascinating to see like you know how does the co-op work what are its strengths what are its downfalls and then we like that gives us a lens to think about broader society and like the conflicts within it and the contradictions and how can we organize, you know, starting from this kernel, how do we organize like an even bigger and more complex thing? Because, you know, the same problems that happen here will just arise, um, you know, later and yeah. in more complex ways. So I, I, I really, really, I really enjoyed my time here thus far. I'm really gonna enjoy the next several months as well. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I really enjoyed my time here too. It's a very, very tight knit community, and and there's something for everybody here. I, I, yeah, I feel like definitely. And I think that's kind of the the beauty of of the co-op. So yeah. So yeah, and it, and of course it's it's so great to have you as part of this community and to <laughs> to have you here, and uh, it looks like we're just about out, out of time here. So. Um, Really, really appreciate you coming yeah, by. So good to talk to you, man. Yeah, and, thank you uh, for having me on. Of I course. I really appreciate it. Of course, of Let course. feel good. <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. And we will see you guys next time. Take care. Good luck.